life would never be the same. I remember looking up to the hill across the river and I saw somebody actually with a machete cutting somebody. And they were like, wow, something's happening here. They're going to kill us, she remembers. A person like when they're cutting and somebody was screaming. People were screaming all over the country. The genocide had begun. It was extremely low tech. No gas chambers here, just machetes, spears, and knives, wielded by the Hutus, the majority tribe, as they tried to wipe out the minority Tutsis. There were no organized roundups, as there had been in Nazi Germany. Tutsis were slaughtered in their tracks wherever they were found. The killing fields were everywhere, and when it was over, three out of every four Tutsis in Rwanda had been killed. According to an article titled Genocide in Rwanda found at unitedhumanrights.org, in 1994 Rwanda's population of 7 million was composed of three ethnic groups, Hutu, 85%, Tutsi, 14%, and Twa, 1%. In the early 1990s, Hutu extremists within Rwanda's political elite blamed the entire Tutsi minority population for the country's increasing social, economic, and political pressures. Tutsi civilians were also accused of supporting a Tutsi-dominated re rebel group, the Rwanda Patriotic Front. On April 6, 1994, a plane carrying President Habiyarayama, a Hutu, was shot down. Violence began almost immediately after that. Under the cover of war, Hutu extremists launched their plans to destroy the entire Tutsi civilian population. Political leaders who might have been able to take charge of the situation and other high-profile opponents of the Hutu extremist plans were killed immediately. Entire families were killed at a time. Women were raped. It is estimated that some 200,000 people particip participated in the genocide. In the weeks after April 6, 1994, 800,000 men, women, and children perished in the Rwanda genocide perhaps as many as three-quarters of the Tutsi population. Although the Rwandans are fully responsible for the organization and execution of the genocide, government and peoples elsewhere all share in the shame of the crime because they failed to prevent and stop this killing campaign. Policymakers in France, Belgium, and the United States and at the United Nations were aware of the preparations for massive slaughter and failed to take the steps needed to prevent it. Aware from the start that Tutsi were being targeted for elimination, the leaders' foreign actors refused to acknowledge the genocide. According to an article found on BBC.com titled Rwanda Genocide, 100 Days of Slaughter, neighbors killed neighbors and some husbands even killed their Tutsi wives, saying that they would be killed even if they refused. At the time, ID cards had people's ethnic group on them, so militia set up roadblocks where Tutsis were slaughtered, often with machetes, which most Rwandans kept around the house. Thousands of Tutsi women were taken away and kept as sla sex slaves. The Hutu extremists set up radio stations and newspapers, which broadcast hate propaganda, urging people to, quote, weed out the cockroaches, end quote, meaning kill the Tutsis. The names of those to be killed were read out on radio. Even priests and nuns have been convicted of killing people, including some who sought shelter in churches. The Rwanda Patriotic Front were a trained military group consisting of Tutsis who had been exiled in earlier years, many of whom lived in Uganda. The Rwanda Patriotic Front were able to enter Rwanda and slowly take over the country. In mid-July 1994, 